Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Muninmoy Pramanik. I teach Competitive Indian Language and Literature at the University of Calcutta. Uh, today we will discuss a module from the paper Indian Aesthetics and this module is on Kesavadasa and his um, poetic thought. Um, we know that literature is an essential part of any culture. Since antiquity, it has carried out the tradition of passing down the stories, mythologies and folklores from one generation to another, which give meaning to a civilization. It also provides a unique opportunity to unique opportunity to it also provides a it also provides a unique opportunity to to admire one's cultural heritage and conserving the um, same simultaneously as mentioned earlier not only a literary tradition allows its enthusiasts and readers a peep into the past it also allows them to look into the to look into the mirror of contemporary literary tradition on the same note hindi literature has played a matchless role in the growth and conservation of hindi language there has been a lot of debates there has there has been a lot of debates regarding the classification of hindi literature since its inception but for simplicity sake um, hindi literature since its beginning can be divided into four sections adhikal the early period beginning from uh, 10th century till 14th century vaktikal the devotional period beginning uh, from uh, 14th century till 17th century Rit Ritikal, Ritikal, scholastic period covers the literary tradition from 1600 to 1850. Adhunikal, the modern period beginning from 19th century. Kesavadasa Mishra was born in year 1555. He is also known by the name of Kesavadasa. He was a renowned Sanskrit scholar and Hindi poet who contributed immensely to the Ritikal period. He is perhaps best known for his Rashik Priya, a pioneering work of the Ritikal of Hindi literature. He came from a family. He came from a family of Brahmin Pandits who were scholars in Sanskrit. His family is said to have served the kings of Orcha and Gwalior in present-day Madhya Pradesh. This needs to mention because his family lineage marked an unconventional decision taken by Keshavadasa. He began writing in the period when the glory of Sanskrit language and literature was at, was at its pinnacle. Nonetheless, he forsake the previously mentioned tradition and chose Brajvasha, a dialect of Hindi, to be the medium of his literary thoughts. This is considered as an act of defiance against the long-established tradition of Sanskrit. Brajvasha was mainly spoken in the Braj region of modern-day Mathura, Agra and nearby regions in Uttar Pradesh. Brajvasha during the medieval period was mostly viewed as a language in which the poets used to develop hymns and devotional songs for Krishna and Radha. Keshwadasha broke this tradition and made people see that Brajbhasha could also encompass varied themes and genres. This is chiefly visible in his best known works like uh, Rashik Priya and Kabib Priya. The Riti tradition of Keshwadasha flourished in the reign of Mughal Empire. It was in large measure a series of literary transplantations from Sanskrit that initially enabled this vernacularization process and these are prominent in the poet's best known works. The Rashik Priya and Kabi Priya, major textbooks of poetry, principles that derived much of their subject matter
from the field of classical literary science as well as the uh, Ramachandrika or Moonlight of Ramachandra which was published uh, which was written in 1601 the first Vrajbhasha experiment with the Mahakavya or courtly epic style. Despite the familial connection to Sanskrit, Keshavadasa adopted a vernacular style of Hindi known as Bridgevasha for his writings. The self-deprecation uh, that was consequent upon this momentous shift, he once described himself as a slow-witted Hindi poet belies his significance described by Alician Brush as a decisive milestone in North Indian literary culture. His decision meant abandoning a highly formalized, stylized and accepted genre that was considered to be a uh, de facto requirement of any poet, let alone one wishing to work within the royal courts of the time. It was not that Hindi poetry was new, since it had long been propagated, mostly orally and in particular by religious figures, but rather that it was um, deprecated. In particular, it was disliked by the Pandits themselves. In the eyes of the critics, according to Bush, to be a vernacular writer was to exhibit both a linguistic and an intellectual failing. A large part of the success of Keshavadasa can be attributed to the paradox that he used to Sanskrit tradition in his vernacular poetry. The literary status of Bridge Vasha was already becoming accepted among the common people in the generations immediately preceding him. In large part um, because of uh, the Bhakti, large part because of the next, next large part because of the Bhakti movement that sought to revitalize Vaishnavite Hinduism and which was centered on the towns of Vrindavan and Mathura. This movement of religious reclamation led to the building, uh, led to the building of many new temples and those who propagated and accepted bridge bhasha at that time considered it to have been the language that was spoken by Krishna. Bhakti poets such as Swami Haridash produced new vernacular devotional works that abandoned Sanskrit, which had been the traditional language of religion and of the Brahmins, and their songs were sung communally rather than in isolation. The rise of significance of Keshavadasa was also influenced by the politics of the time. The Mughal Empire held sway in the area with Orcha being a tributary state. The tributary rulers asserted their remaining power through cultural channels and Keshavadasha was associated with Orcha's court from the time of the reign of Madhukarsha. Bush describes him as a friend, advisor and guru to the Orcha kings but also a consummate poet and intellectual. Now let us talk about major works of Keshavadasha. His first work is Ratan Bhavani, which was written in 1581. Three anthology of poems are attributed to him, Rashik Priya, 1591, Ramachandrika, 1600, and Kabi Priya, 1601. The Ramachandrika is an abridged translation of the Ramayana in 30 sections. His other works include uh, Rakshiks uh, written in 1600 and Chandamala 1602, Veer Singh Dev Charit 1607, Vij Nagita 1610 and uh, Jahangir Jas Chandrika in 1612. He wrote in Bridge Vasha though with a heavy mixture of Bundelkhandi dialect. Now let us talk about Rashik Priya. Rashik Priya was written by Keshavadasa in the year of 1591. Rashik Priya is considered as an important literary piece of the Ritikal 
of Hindi literary tradition. At that time, Keshavadasha was the court poet of the well-known king Madhukar, Madhukar Shah and his son Prince Indrajit Shah of Orcha, present day Madhya Pradesh. Written in Braj Bhasha, Rashikpriya covers the emotions and behavior of ideal lovers. Most importantly, the immortal love of Krishna and Radha. Subsequently, for the upcoming generation of writers, Rashikpriya became the stylistic guide in terms of Hindi romantic literature. It also became quite a favorite literary work among the contemporary Rajput kings of India. K.P. Bahadur, who translated Rashik Priya into English as the Rashik Priya of Kesavadasha, made the following remarks about it. Kesavadasha wrote Rashik Priya to provide entertainment to such readers as were interested in the poetry of love. Love was considered to be a primary emotion, not only by the poets of Keshava's time, but also by those who had preceded him. Rashikpiya deals with love in all its varied aspects. The lover portrayed in Keshavadasha's book is Krishna and the beloved is Radha. In poetic language, they are often called Nayaka and Naika. The book describes the different kinds of Nayakas and Naikas, their lovemaking, their moods, sentiments and emotions and illustrates these vivid accounts of the lovers in various situations. Keshavadash classifies his heroines in his Rashiki Priya in various ways. Best known to artists are his eight main Naikas. But before this, there are the ancient divisions in four types, Padmini, Chit Chitrini, Shankhini and Hastini, as well as another three divisions dependent on whom the Naika loves and yet further subdivisions as their age and experience Mugdha, Madhya and Praudha, artless, adolescent and experience. Our heroine is the uh, nature heroine whose husband has just returned. This classification is not among the eight well-known Naikas among which the, the, uh, the Prosita Pitaka Naika or Bahadur in 1972 or the Prosita Preyashi Naika or Randhwa in 1962 is the nearest the heroine whose husband is away. According to Randhwa, however, some, some uh, rhetoricians add another three including our Agatha Partika Naika one whose husband has uh, just returned and comes immediately to uh, seek her. Keshavadasha fondly remembered Betwa and Orcha as the most beautiful things on earth, more so because it was he, Keshavadasha, who had made these places famous and known to the wider audience. He wrote about pretty girls when his hair had already had turned grey. He reminisced about the youthfulness of them. O Keshab, what have these grey hair have brought to thee may such fate not befall your worst enemy? Girls with moonbeam bodies and gazelle eyes call me Baba and go their ways. Kushwan Singh, another famous author, um, Kushwan Singh wrote this poet. Uh, he is another famous author we all know. Kushpan Singh says um, uh, Keshavadasha as uh, in, in his comment as that uh, instead I read a long note prepared by Pukhraj Maro, erudite commissioner of 
Sagar on poet Keshavadas in 1500, uh, Keshavadas who born in 1546, who immortalized the Betwa. His father was tutor or Rajguru of the rulers of Urcha. In his turn, Keshavadas became the Rajguru among his students was the quotation dancer Rai Pravin. He used the Bundelkhandi in his poetry. He excelled in Srinagar, uh, Sringar Rasa. Some of the manuscripts of Rashik Priya are famous for their illustrations. Keshavadasha's Rashik Priya distinguishes Naikas into eight different categories. They are known as uh, Astanaika. The classification of Astanaika was for the first time given Bharata in Natya Shastra. Keshavadasha elaborates on them. The eight Naikas represent eight different states or uh, avastha in relationship to, relationship to her hero or Nayaka. As archetypal states of the romantic heroine, it has been used as theme in Indian painting, literature, sculpture, as well as Indian classical dance. The Natya Shastra describes the Naikas in the following order. Vashaka Shajja, Biraho Kanthita, Swadhina Vartuka, Kalahantarita, Khandita, Vipralabdha, Prashita Vartika, and Abhisharika. Vashaka Shajja. Vashaka Shajja, or one dressed up for union, or Vashaka Shajja is the one who is waiting for her lover to return from a long and arduous journey. She is mostly depicted in her bedchamber, filled with lotus leaves and garlands. She dresses herself for the union with her lover and eager with expectation of love's pleasure. Her beauty is compared by Keshavadasha to Rati, the Hindu love goddess, waiting for her husband, the love god Kamadeva. Now, Biraha Kanthita. Biraha Kanthita. Biraha Kanthita, one distressed by separation or Utka as described by Keshavadasha, is the distressed heroine pinning for her lover who, due to his preoccupation, fails to return home. She is depicted eagerly waiting for her lover, sitting or standing on a bed or out in the pavilion. Swadhina Vartuka Swadhina Vartuka once having her husband in subjection or Swadhina Patika as named by Keshavadasa is the woman who is loved by her husband and controls him. He is subjugated by her um, intense love and pleasing qualities. In paintings, this Naika is depicted with a Nayaka who applies Mahavar on her feet or a Vermilion Tilak or Mark on her forehead. In Jayadeva's Gita Govinda, as well as as well as in the poem Kuru Yadunandana, Radha is portrayed as a Swadhinavartuka in the letter. Radha commands her lover, the god Krishna, to rearrange her makeup, which is in desire due to their fierce coitures. Kalohantarita. Kalohantarita or one separated by quarrel or avishandhita as named by Keshavadasha is a heroine separated from her lover due to a quarrel or jealousy or her own arrogance. Her lover is usually depicted leaving her apartment deserted while she too becomes heartsick, heartsick and, uh, rep and repentant without him. In other portrayals, she is depicted refusing the advances of her lover or refusing a wine cup from him. Next is Khandita. Khandita or one enraged with her love, with her lover, is an enraged heroine whose lover had promised her to spend the night with her, but instead comes to her how, comes to her house the next morning after spending the night with another woman she is depicted offended rebuking her lover 
for his infidelity. Next is Bipralabdha. Bipralabdha, or one deceived by her lover, also spelled as Bipralabdha, is a deceived heroine who waited for her lover the whole night. She is depicted throwing away her jewelry as a lover did not keep his promise. This happens when a lover meets a Khandita and promises a Christ and breaks his promise. Prashita Vartika. Prashita Vartika is one with a sojourning husband or Prashita Patika as named by Keshava Dasha is the woman whose husband has gone away from her for some business and does not return on the appointed day. She is depicted seated, mourning, surrounded by her maids, but refusing to be consoled. Avisharika. Avisharika is one who moves, is a heroine, who sets aside her modesty and moves out of her home to secretly meet her lover. She is depicted at the door of her house and on her way to the tries to defying all kinds of difficulties like the storm, snakes and dangers of the forest. In art, Avisharika is portrayed often in hurry towards her destination. Next is Kavipriya. Keshava's Kavipriya, the poet's favorite, is essentially a pattern book of literary troops and metaphors. But it is also more than this. Keshava's well-chosen method of instruction is to instruct delightfully and his example verses are not merely stylistic types or models but a real articulation of real articulation of poetic wit and feeling in their own right. Keshava's musical words, images, rhythms and internal ryth rhymes tumble over each other like currents in a mountain stream. The Sanskritic tradition of Alanka Shastra, the science of poetics, boasts sufficient categories to label every conceivable poetic troupe and then some. And yet poets such as Keshavadasa, while hires to that tradition, wrote in vernacular meters such as Kavit or Kavitta and Savaya that fall beyond the remit of the Sanskrit Pandits and we need a further set of tools with which to appropriate the structure and aesthetics of a poem such as Kavipriya. Our focus here will be on the structure of one of his preferred meters, the Kavit. Rather than develop an extended metaphor, one that builds detail around a single image. The poet sets out an elaborate list of mutual complementary separate metaphors, scoring his imagination for more and for more and more extravagant invocations of his subject. Each imagine in turn proves each image in turn proves inadequate and is supplanted by a new one. Hyperbole is hipped on hyperbole. Keshavadash worked similarly in describing Radha, the epitome of the sublime and graceful heroine in a makshik, a lingering toe-to-head tour of her charms, a pilgrimage along the trail of ultimate beauty. In one of the section of Kavipriya, he visits such sights as her waist, slender as the charity of a miser, slim as the falsehood of truth, her fingernails, gods for the carriage of love, pains to inscribe passion's victory, her cheeks, legs for the crocodiles of her earrings, a smooth course for the running of Kamdeva's chariot, or her voice, sister of song, the very bina of the goddess of eloquence. Either the luster of Lakshmi lies in the lotus of her face or her lovely moon face has stolen the moon's moonlight. Either it is the light of a marriage in her dear eyes or the lovely lustre of her beauty uh, cleverly concealed, the splendor of her fragrance or the lightening of her teeth or Keshav, 
the skillfulness of a skillful mind itself. O fair and artless girl, your slight little smile is the enchantress of my Mohan or the fairness of Saraswati. The Kavitya is something of a maverick within Hindi prosody in that its syllabic structure is formulated by the number of syllables, uh, by the number of syllables alone without regard to their individual length or weight. A note on the poet's name, we call him Keshav, automatically restoring an etymological Sha to the word, but he calls himself Kesab. And as we shall see later, this spelling is essential in the functioning of certain troops. The Kavipriya is a veritable masterclass in the aesthetics of poetic style. Revealing in a lavish flood of conceits, the poem celebrates its own eloquence as much as it eulogizes the qualities of its narrative subjects, Radha and Krishna. But the lush pleasures of this aesthetic world do not meet universal approval. A younger contemporary of Keshavadasha named Sundar Das, born in 1596 and died on uh, in 1689 was a follower of Dadu, the 16th century proponent of Nirguna Bhakti. The ethos of Nirgun can tend towards the Puritan. Sundardash rejects the Sagun Bhakti use of human amours as a metaphor for divine love and snarls angrily at the Riti poet's romantic inclinations perhaps uniquely in the pre-modern Hindi canon. Sundarda specifically targets a fellow poet for criticism, challenging his indulgent sensuality and subjecting him to a undercleared but cutting pastis in which he recycles some of Keshava's favorite images to great effect. Now let us conclude our discussion. Keshavadasha was no doubt a powerful magician whose magic was portrayed through his literary thoughts. His pioneer works not only dominated the literary domains, but they also influenced the political scenarios. He later on became the confident, the confident um, and a political advisor to the rulers of Orcha. One can actually trace the upliftment of Braj Bhasha through the works of Keshavadasa. Not only did he pin down his works in Braj Bhasha, but he also encouraged the future generation of writers to choose the vernaculars over languages to express their literary creativity. Thank you.